there's a very high chance I'm gonna get in trouble for making this video. So let's begin. Basically, I saw this video that Shane Dawson made about exposing the beauty industry world. He basically said when an influencer works with a brand to create a product, an influencer might only take 10 to 20% of the revenue. What the fuck? So get this, if you have a product that's $50 and by slapping your face, your name on it, you might only take $10 and the brand will take $40. So that's kind of crazy. And this is actually industry standard. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jade. I'm an 18 year old entrepreneur. And I'll be honest, I'm living in this influencer bubble. And sometimes these numbers and these things in the industry are pretty obvious to me. But then it got me thinking, just because it's obvious to me might not mean it's obvious to the world. And I was reading so many comments on the Shane Dawson series and so many people were surprised that an influencer might make dog shit in a project. So in today's video, I just really wanted to expose more things in the influencer world that you might not be even aware of. You know, what is it really like making money online? How do you really become a successful YouTuber and Instagrammer? And what do you have to give up in order to do those things? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video and we're going to dive right in. <laughs> Alright guys, so I'm going to just jump right in. I would recommend grabbing a snack, like maybe keep this video up as a podcast so you can kind of chit chat with me, maybe do your homework while we're sitting down and talking. It's going to be a long one. So go grab something to do in the meantime. And my mom's calling. Hello. Hi mom. Oh my Oh, thanks. I love you. Say hi. Hi. Okay, bye. I love you. Okay, so the first secret that you might not know in the influencer world is managers. So most talent or influencers have a manager. And what a manager basically is, is someone to help assist you with brand deals, make you more money, and essentially handle the business side of creatives so you can focus on what you're best at. Now, I'm not going to speak for all managers and I don't even have a manager, but I have really close friends with one of the top agencies in the world that manage the top talent and this is the numbers that I can share and hopefully I won't get in trouble with. <laughs> this has just never been done before so I don't know how much I can say but I really want to say this information to hopefully help out someone who's super passionate about social media so they can take the first steps to make this a full-time thing. So here it goes. One of the top networks for management is full screen. There's also select management. Those are one of the most top. So what management does for the YouTubers or Instagrammers is they get them brand deals. So they will maybe go up to Target and be like, hey, my influencer has 100,000 followers. I charge 10K. And what a manager will do is take a cut of that transaction. And typically, it's around dun, 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 30%. So what does that mean? If the project was $10,000 to have a 30 second video talking about Target, allegedly, you know, you could be only taking home 7,000 and your manager will take 3,000. Now it's not always like this. I'm not saying full screen does this. I'm not saying like all management is the same, but that's what you can typically expect for brand deals. So that's just the first tier of the layer. And we're not even done yet. A lot of the times, if you're doing merch, managers also have to pay the fulfillment company. So say you're selling merch. In addition to getting 20 to 30% cut from your manager, you also have to give 40% to the manufacturer. So I'm not gonna name names, but let's just say there's a ton of YouTubers with amazing products, they're selling tons of them, but they're probably only taking home 25%. By the end of all the cuts, you could be making not as much money, of course. Which is why when I was watching the Shane Dawson video, it really wasn't for me that accurate because, I mean, let's just be honest, like, I don't know, typically the reason why companies will give slimmer and slimmer, you know, cuts to the influencer is because the influencers are too big of a risk for them to take on. Just think about it, like these influencers, when you're creating merch or product or brand deals, the influencer's not really investing money up front you know they're just taking a cut or a percentage of the project and we would ask you to put up no money so you're just it's all profit so a lot of the managers or fulfillment companies they can literally go in depth for helping these people we're going to take care of everything customer service obviously the website fulfilling it shipping manufacturing we would front the cost to produce all of this so if it fails you put me in debt so it's just something to keep in mind i was just reading a lot of comments of people saying you know like why do these brands take so much money you know why are there so many cuts and it's because when you're not investing anything up front other people have to invest their time and if they're not getting paid and they can live off this, these people are taking on serious debt for you. So that's just something to keep in mind. I don't see it as anything unfair. I think anything lower than like 5% you're taking home is a little insane. But I also don't believe that a lot of brands are being ethical with their approach. And this goes into my third comment, which is actually all about the filtering. So 
I've seen this happen to so many of my friends. I'll give you guys an example. So I recently I had a sponsorship on my channel. Thank you Dot Size for sponsoring today's video. And I probably have to go through four or five revisits and edits of the sponsorship. So for example, I would say the lines or the script I had to read, like some brands are so specific and controlling that they really just care about like certain even words you use. Like one of the revisions we had to do is I had to, I couldn't use the word affordable. I had to use another world to index instead of affordable. It's just very specific. You know, there's so much filtering that goes on in a sponsorship. So if you're ever watching a YouTuber speak and it almost feels so stiff, like they're reading off a script, it's because they are. And it's so frustrating because I wish influencer marketing wasn't like that. I wish it wasn't like hashtag ad. I wish it was more of like a genuine recommendation, like your friend recommending a product versus like reading a script. But due to just legal issues and the brand's integrity, like they are going to be very controlling on the influencer. And I don't think it should be that way. So yeah, that's just the reality of brand deals. And I have literally, actually, I don't know if I can I'll actually put up a script right here of what brands might send to an influencer to say there's like certain bullet points you have to hit there's like a time mark you have to hit like a 30 second you know duration it's pretty intense so that's something to keep in mind when you're watching your favorite creator make a sponsorship they're typically like under a lot of pressure to make sure to say the right things which leads me to number four the fourth secret that I feel like not a lot of people realize is that most people online are not themselves. Okay, I get it. You're like, Captain Obvious, I get it. Most people are, you know, portraying a personality online, but I actually genuinely mean it, guys. Like, so many people, and even I, have issues truly being authentic online. And it's not about the filtering from the brand deals. It's not about that. I think there's so many, part of being, <laughs> Excuse me. Part of being an influencer is just making your audience happy and especially the people that are investing so much time and money into you. So your managers, your manufacturers, the brand deals, there's a lot of eyeballs on you and you don't want to mess up. So what I've seen a lot of the times is online, your personality can essentially be distorted so you can make more money and provide more awareness so your managers and the people around you actually get paid. For example, on my channel, like the one you're currently watching, I made a few videos about, you know, copyright issues and exposing YouTuber things and it's not very brand friendly because of how controversial it is, it brings in a negative light. And because of that, you know, my channel will suffer. And so many people keep it family friendly. They try not to cuss because YouTube and brands really like that because it portrays a more perfect image. And because of that, I feel like a lot of people censor themselves, they filter, and by the end of filtering yourself consistently, you just become a whole other person. So I thought I would just kind of share this message of saying like, if you're someone who's creating content and you feel like your audience sees you in a certain way, you don't want to let them down like I know how hard is it like it is to almost keep up an act and I'm not saying like people I don't even know I mean the next best example I have of this is like the vlog squad you know David Obrick and all his audiences obviously love the humor he brings but you have to understand that YouTube is very formulaic David probably understands the algorithm it takes to you know grow an audience so I guess what I'm saying is when you see someone online it's typically the formulaic perfect version of them so they can get more attention so their team or their managers actually can get paid and it's the reality you know more awareness more eyes more people that are happy means more brand deals and that means the people that have been supporting you like managers or manufacturers can keep going and it's why i believe that more and more youtubers and influencers want to be more independent and less controlled so it's just this really, you know, chicken or the egg situation on, you know, what's right for you. If you're someone who's a beginning creator and you're confused if you should get a manager or just fully do business yourself, it's definitely something to think about and you can't decide in one day. But I thought I would bring some light to this topic where if you do decide to go the route of having people on your team without upfront payment, just realize that you will be controlled and you will have to do things that you might not want to in order to keep your business alive. So I think not a lot of people want to talk about that subject and I hope this can bring some sort of light to people feeling alone like their personalities aren't real. I know how hard it is to like be yourself and also still get views like that's just the honest truth. It's really hard because the real version of me is the imperfect like not algorithmic friendly version on YouTube because we're always trying to get attention and like yell in the camera to get people to stay watching and I, I know how 
it can feel like you're selling out. So if you're that person, let me know in the comments how you deal with being authentic online. How have you tried to be more like yourself while still keeping your business up and alive? I'm genuinely curious and I know so many people struggle with this. So if you have a story yourself, please leave a comment below. If you're not aware, this channel right here is just a bunch of creators and the most bright people in the world that want to change the world with content. And we're here to support you. So if you want to join the Dharma Nation, make sure you just subscribe and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, comment below your thoughts of today's video. I am so thankful that you're here. I literally had so many issues filming this video because I just didn't want to piss off anyone. Again, like you can even tell from this video how filtered I'm trying to be so I don't piss off my friends or the management that I have relationship to. It's a very sticky situation. This means a lot to me. I'm gonna hope this is to you. So let me know if you like it. Give this video a like. Catch you guys in the next one. I love you so much and I'll see you very soon.